I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll begin my sermon this morning by ripping off a few lines from my favorite preacher in the Episcopal Church, Fleming Rutledge. Here is what she said in one of her Advent sermons. The church lives in Advent. This is to say the church lives between two Advents. Jesus Christ has come. Jesus Christ will come. We do not know the day or the hour. If you find this tension almost unbearable at times, then you understand the Christian life. The almost unbearable tension of Advent that Rutledge describes is also expressed in our scripture passages this morning, passages that are about prophets and prophecy. The theme of this morning is announced in the collect that we prayed at the beginning of the service, which prays, Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. And so, with that in mind, we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. The first part of the book of Isaiah includes many messages of repentance. Isaiah first calls to the inhabitants of Jerusalem to turn their backs on injustice and idol worship. Then there is a cataclysm as Jerusalem falls to the armies of Babylon. Solomon's temple is razed to the ground and many of the city's inhabitants are taken captive to Babylon. So then we hear the cry of the exiles, both in the book of Isaiah and in many other passages in the Old Testament. One poignant cry of lament is found in Psalm 137, which begins, By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. This cry of lament, the cry of those who are exiled, is the cry that is now finally being answered here in Isaiah chapter 40, written well after the fall of Jerusalem. And the cry is a tender one, the cry of God's compassion for God's people. A cry goes out in the wilderness, in the place of desolation and exile. A voice is heard, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people see it, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hold on the cry of the prophet says. The story is not over. Salvation is on the way. The glory of the Lord is about to be revealed. The ultimate message of Isaiah is about hope. It's about this expectation of the arrival of God to set all things right. This vision of a highway that is being prepared in desolate places is the idea that God's salvation is like a procession, like a parade, like a host, an army of angels that is on its way. Salvation is marching toward the pain and the suffering of exile, and nothing will stand in its way. Later in Isaiah, in a few chapters, Isaiah begins to describe what this salvation will look like. And we find that salvation will, will arrive in an unexpected package. Salvation comes in this mysterious figure who Isaiah calls the suffering servant, the one chosen by God to set God's people free of their captivity, both physical and spiritual. But this chosen one will suffer for the sake of the people, will be abused, and will be put to death unjustly. 
And there's a way to read Isaiah as a, as a historical document. There likely was a particular person that the writer of Isaiah had in mind when they wrote of the suffering servant, this coming Messiah. We should acknowledge that the book, the books of the Hebrew Scriptures, what Christians often call the Old Testament, we should acknowledge them on their own terms. There, this is an important thing to do for the sake of our Jewish siblings. Yet as Christians, in the light of the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we must also read Scripture in a different way. Christ is the eternal Word of God that brings into focus Scripture, the Word of God. And so we can join with the earliest Christians and with Christians through the centuries and also read Isaiah through the lens of Christ. Jesus' earliest followers, the disciples and the writers of the Gospels, identified Jesus very strongly with Isaiah's suffering servant. You can see this from the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark all the way to the end. Jesus' story is explicitly linked to the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. Jesus is the suffering servant whose life and death, whose wildly unexpected and earth-shattering resurrection brings about the salvation of God's people. But here in Advent, we are plonked down at the beginning of that story when John the baptizer, this strange new prophet, appears in the wilderness. The wilderness. It's absolutely no coincidence that he appears in the wilderness. And John takes up Isaiah's ancient cry, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John's call, like Isaiah's, is a call to repentance, a call to turn around. It's about realigning our minds and our hearts, our wills and our priorities toward the arrival of our God. John, the new Isaiah, was tasked with announcing this arrival in the person of Jesus Christ. At John's birth, John's own father prophesied over him, saying, you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. But John is not salvation itself. John is just the witness, the herald of salvation, the harbinger of day. John's father goes on to say that in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. We think of our psalm this morning, which speaks of the Lord's coming salvation like this. It says, Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. What is this pathway of peace? What is the highway that is built in the desert for which mountains are brought low and valleys lifted up? Isaiah and John the Baptist were not calling for mountaintop removal, for the demolition of literal mountains and the filling up of literal valleys. They were calling for spiritual preparation, repentance. They were calling for us to make the paths of our hearts into a spiritual highway on which God might come to save us. They were calling us to look with expectation and hope to remove the barriers of our own healing, the ones that we create and the ones that we throw up in our self-sabotage. We are called to make our hearts into pathways of peace, fitting highways, in, filling highways in defiance of the desolation and the loneliness of this world. For we know the salvation of our God is still being worked out as the incarnation of God as a human being, Jesus Christ, reverberates through the universe like a shout in a canyon. 
We, the church, live between two advents. We live at the turn of the ages. Christ has conquered evil and death, and yet death and evil have not yet admitted their defeat. This is the almost unbearable tension of Advent, of the entire Christian life. We're right in the middle of it. And right here in the middle of this tension, this anxiety and fear, right in the middle of the very shadow of death, frankly, as this global pandemic sweeps through our community and causes so much death and suffering, right here, we may want to identify with another part of Isaiah's cry, all people are like grass that wither and fade. Our lives are short like a breath. But we must not forget the most important part. For Isaiah cries tenderly to us, The grass wither, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The message of salvation, the message of hope in Jesus Christ will never be silent. God's promises stand, though everything else withers and fades. Pay attention. Listen to the words of the prophets speaking tenderly to you. We may live in the shadow of death, but Christ comes to us like a shepherd, gathering his lambs into his arms. This and only this is the hope that allows us to be pathways of peace, even in the midst of unbearable tension and turmoil. So let us prepare for the arrival of our God Watch, be patient. Salvation is very near for those who trust in Christ. Amen.